on this computer. That's important. Okay, we just started recording and we're going to be making our saguaro cactuses this morning. It's going to be a lot of fun. So does everyone have their sheet of paper ready? Give me a thumbs up if you do. Okay, does everyone have a pencil? And does everyone have their Sharpie marker? Those three things. Good. All right. So in a second, I'm going to have you tag my screen that has the paper, but not yet. I just want to show you how we're holding our paper today. So the orientation of our paper today is called vertical. Sometimes you'll hear people call this portrait, right? The other way is landscape um, or horizontal. That's what we did last week. This week, though, we're doing vertical. So just make sure that your page is vertical, okay? And I'm going to ask everyone at this time to just go ahead and pin my screen that has the white piece of paper. So if everyone can go ahead and do that. All right. Did everyone do that? Give me a thumbs up if you did. Okay. All right. And I'm just bringing up our picture that we're doing. I bring it up on my computer. This way I can look at it as I'm teaching you guys. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Today we're gonna learn a little bit about foreground, middle ground, and background. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do first. So the paper here is pretty big. Our first cactus is gonna be around the size of your hand towards the bottom of the paper. Okay, I'm gonna draw it first and then you can draw along with me. So I'm gonna start around here. I just made these two little dots, you see them? You don't have to do the theme if you don't want to. I just wanna show you the shape. So it's a very organic looking shape. Looks almost like a rock. Okay, that's what we're looking for. We don't want a perfect shape. We want it to be a little bit organic looking. So once you have that shape, go ahead, give me a thumbs up. And we're just gonna work very, very step by step. Okay, and just try your best to follow along with the drawing part. So give me that big thumbs up so I know. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna work on adding dimension to our picture. So first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna make another circle right on top of that one. Almost looks like a head. See that? It won't look like a head for long. <laughs> that's gonna be the flower that sits on top of our cactus. Okay. This picture makes me wanna go to Arizona. I love Arizona. It's one of my favorite places to visit. Okay. Give me a thumbs up once you have the little head. Okay, big thumbs up. All right. So this is the part where we're gonna start adding a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna start by just making like a little dot by the head there, okay? This is where I'm gonna be starting to draw my other cactus. So just follow right along with me. This one, the shape kind of goes like this and down all the way to the bottom of my page. Okay, so we were talking about foreground, middle ground and background. This is gonna be a cactus that's behind this front cactus. We know that because we can see the full shape of the cactus that's in front. This one, we only see a portion of it. That's because he's hiding behind the front cactus. So the foreground is the things that are closest to us and they will appear larger even if they're smaller. Give me a thumbs up once you have that. I know it doesn't look like anything yet, it looks like a bunch of scribble scrabble that my four-year-old would do. Not that, I mean, four-year-old scribble scrabble is beautiful. But it just doesn't look like anything yet. You just have to trust. Okay, ready? Give me a thumbs up. Okay. Next thing. I am going to draw another shape behind this shape. So I just made that little dot there. That's where I'm going to be starting. Now watch what I do with this one the shape kind of comes up to a little bit of a point. And just watch me first. This is a bigger one. Goes all the way down to the bottom. 
And I want to show you another thing here. Put another dot right there. And I'm going to pull it down. So that's the shape of that cactus. I think drawing can be the trickiest part for most people. But today's project, the drawing is pretty easy. I think you guys will find. So just give me a thumbs up when you're ready to move on. Okay. All right. So watch what I'm going to do here. I would say just watch me first. So let's start here and I'm going to end here. I like these little dots because they're helping me figure out, you know, where to put things. Okay. This one gets nice and tall, comes again to like a little bit of a point at the top. Okay. That could be the mommy. I know that my daughter would start naming all of these. She'd say, that's mommy, that's daddy, there's Jackie, and there's Maya. So once you have that, just give me a big thumbs up. Okay. All right. So here's what's going to happen now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dot. So I want to make sure I can see that, right? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna put a little dot right there. And I'm gonna do, this is a very, very, very tall cactus. I'm not gonna go all the way to the top. I don't know if you can see, I didn't go, I didn't go all the way to the top. So I stopped it before I got to the top. Sorry, I'm holding my camera right now. Now, what I'm gonna do is right about there, I'm going to bring this down to the bottom of my page. So it's like a cactus swarrow family. This is really the only swarrow. I just like that word. Okay, so at the top there, we're going to put another head, but half of it's not in our picture. Hang on, sorry. Just want to make sure you guys can see it. Okay, so it's like cut off a little bit. See that? We have our cactus family. And we're just gonna draw the flower that goes at the top of this canvas, uh, cactus here. Okay? So this is a fun part. This is gonna be the middle of my flower. Looks almost like a daisy. Now I am just going to draw right through my lines because when I go to paint this later, you won't see those lines anymore. Or you can erase the lines. If you want to, you can go back with your eraser and erase all of those lines. Okay. Now what we're going to do, you guys still with me? Give me a thumbs up. So I make sure I'm not moving too fast for anyone. Okay. We're going to make some lines down. I guess this is the daddy or it could be the mommy. Um, I'm going to start making some lines going down. There's one. Put them kind of close together. Two. Four. Five. Well, when if it's six, if you have more or less, that's okay. And just let me know when you have that. With your thumbs up. Okay. 
you can also write in to me, just so you guys know. I can't see everyone. If I put it in gallery mode, what I'm finding is I can't come back to my pin screen for the folks that aren't able to be here with us. I have a couple that aren't in the class, but they're gonna be watching the video later. So then what happens is they can only see it in gallery view if I do that. So I can only see a couple of you guys. So again, you guys can feel free to write in to me anytime and I'll see it in like the little chat box. There's a little box that says chat at the bottom. Okay. Okay, okay I see Summer's gonna be here soon. Sour wrote, it looks like a heart. <laughs> cool. So I'm just looking. Okay, Summer is here. All right, you guys ready to move on? Next thing? Okay, it's not tricky. I think you guys will get it. We're gonna be making lines inside these curved cactuses as well. But the lines are gonna be with the curve of the cactus. So I'm sure you're not sure what I mean by that. So just watch me first. So instead of straight lines, going to be curved. Now what's going to happen is the lines get less curved as you go towards the middle. You see this one's pretty straight. So it's very curved, a little curved, sort of curved. Next one I'm going to do straight and then watch what's going to happen. It's going to be a little bit curved towards the other side. More curved. More curved and then very curved. So I know this one's tricky. So don't worry about it. We're just having some fun. Oh, and look, there's this area underneath here. This line from this cactus should have gone all the way down. So I'm just gonna actually fix that. There we go. That looks more normal now. So you see, it's just like a little bit curved. So these are like smaller, rounder cactuses. Whereas this one up here is tall. Like if you've ever been to Arizona, you may have seen a cactus like that. Not just Arizona. There's a lot of places that have saguaro cactuses. Yeah. Anywhere around Mexico. Um, many, many different places. Okay. We're actually going to do the same thing with this cactus behind here. But watch how I'm going to do it. My curve is just going to be slightly different because the cactuses are facing different directions. Okay? So just watch. I'm going to make a line going like that. So this is actually going to be the top of this cactus. Okay? So you might just want to watch me first. So now I'm going to make this line a little curved. This one's going to be a little curved in the other direction. And I'm just going to start making them more curved as I go out. Looks like a watermelon. One more. And then once you have that, just give me a big thumbs up so I know. Just take your time. And once you have it, just give me a thumbs up so I know. You can also write in to me and let me know if I'm going too fast. Okay. Sarah, thumbs up for you? Okay, great. Sophia, how you doing? 
Oh, Sophie, I'm sorry. Doing good? Thumbs up. And I see Abby and Dominic. The eyes are kind of far away. I need like a microscope to see you guys. <laughs> Not a microscope. I need a magnifying glass. <laughs> okay. We're going to be putting lines in our very last cactus. Okay. So this is going to be similar. Again, I'm going to put that line in the middle. This is, again, a more curved cactus. So the lines are going to reflect that. Okay. Now, as I pull my lines out here, if this line gets here, well, this cactus is in front, so you're not going to see that line covered by him or her. Okay, that's perfect for that one. And guess what? I'm going to do the same for the one that's right above it. So the lines are going to get curved as they go out. So I'm not going to draw through this flower. I'm putting my marker away. Once you have done this, you can begin tracing with your Sharpie. And just do me a favor, take your time here. When you're done tracing, can you just write in your chat box, you could just say done. Because again, I can't see everyone, unfortunately. If I go to my gallery mode, I'm gonna lose my pin screen. And since my computer's old, for some reason, it doesn't work great with Zoom. And I have that issue where we won't be able to see the pin screen anymore. Okay, Sarah, you did all your tracing already too? Wow, that's awesome. We're gonna give everyone a minute. So I'm actually gonna go to the bathroom really fast. I'll be right back, okay? I'll be really quick. And you can too if you're finished. Okay, I'm looking around and it looks like most people are still tracing, correct? Again, just type in to me when you finish and we'll do our paint setup together. Sophie, I see you have some nice art supplies there. <laughs> and she's working outside. I know I mentioned it last time, it's a beautiful thing to be able to work outside in this weather. 
But what you need is a nice flat surface to put on top of your table. Most outdoor picnic tables are not the best for doing art. So a regular picnic table will have creases in between the planks of wood, which could mess up your drawing or your painting. Um, anything with texture is gonna be a little bit challenging to make art on. So what I recommend is taking like a piece of paneling or board, just something flat and hard that you can place on top of the table and then you can put your artwork on top of it. They actually even sell something like that at Michael's. It's like a big gigantic clipboard that's made from really thick wood. Okay, Amelia's all done. Thank you for writing in too. So I do recommend working outside if and when you can. It's just such a nice thing to do. Samantha? What's that? Is that um, Lisa? Never mind. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my picture out of the way for a minute. We're going to do our painting setup together. I'm just going to gather my materials and I'll show you what colors you'll need. So I'm just grabbing a few things here. It's okay if you're not up to this yet. I'm gonna wait still for a minute for everyone. I know this is a few people's first week. So if you are new to me, I'm big on saving money and saving the earth. So I don't like using new things if I don't have to. A lot of times I paint over canvases um, I paint over a lot of my old canvases uh, and we get stuff donated to us too, like a lot of old canvases also that people have painted over. We'll just paint right on top of them sometimes. Now for our paint, a lot of times I'll use a paper plate or I'll use an egg carton. In this case, I actually have this fancy schmancy paper. It's called palette paper. Basically it just has like a waxy surface. So you can use almost anything. All right. So can you guys give me a big thumbs up if you're ready to start putting out your paints? Okay. Awesome. So for this painting today, I know we all have different colors. You're definitely going to need a green. If you have more than one type of green, you can put out all the greens you have. I always start out with less than I think I'll need, and we can always add. But if we put out yeah, too much, one to make it lighter. No, it doesn't need to be the same color. So, if you unmute, mute. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the same colors. I know some people got the kit, and some people just have paints around their house. We are going to need quite a bit of blue. I like to put them in a circle. whatever you got. I'm going to say we're going to need most of our colors. We only need a tiny bit of red. The two colors I put out the most of are my blue and my yellow, actually. And I have another kind of teal green. That'll come in useful. If you don't have this color, that's quite all right. We can mix our own and I'll show you how. Okay. So I want to make sure I have all the colors I'm going to need. All right, so now we need our white and our black. So I actually have to go get more black paint. I'm gonna have to run over to my paint supply area. I'm gonna need quite a bit of white and I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go grab my black paint. See you in one second.
Okay, sorry about that. So I just put a little amount of my black. Now I'll show you what else you need. You're gonna need a cup of water for your paint, for your paint brushes. And you're gonna need an assortment of paint brushes. You're gonna want one that's a little bit bigger because we have a lot of background to do in this picture. So you'll want a bigger brush to do those bigger areas. And you're gonna want at least one brush for fine detailing. I like to have more than one because sometimes when you've been using a brush for a while, the tip gets frayed or, you know, it's just nice to have an extra one. This way you don't have to constantly clean your brushes. It's just my preference. All right, so give me a thumbs up once you have your paints out. And we also need a piece of paper towel for wiping our paints off on. In a second, I'm gonna show you how to mix our first color. I'm gonna mix it right on my paper here. This is my palette paper. We're gonna be doing our background first. I'm actually gonna grab a bigger brush. Okay, thumbs up everyone, ready to move on? Good, all right. So the first color that we're gonna be making is a very pale blue. It's kind of a greenish blue. I'll show you how I make it. Gonna need some white, good amount of blue. And I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of my teal in there. If you don't have teal, that's okay. You can put a little bit of any green in there. And I mix it together until all the color is completely mixed. What I'm gonna do is dip my brush in water, add a tiny bit of water to this. That's gonna make it a little bit more fluid and easier to use our paint. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I'm gonna show you the parts that we're painting. So, we're painting our background with this color. So I'm gonna use my bigger brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill in the big areas, but I'm not gonna get close to my edge. Cause if you've been with me for a little bit, you know what I like to do is use my thin brush, my tiny brush for getting up to my little tiny detail areas. You don't have to be moving as fast as me. I just prefer to be like a half a step ahead of you guys so you all know where you're going. If your paint feels a little dry when you're putting it on your paper, just add a little bit of water to your pile and mix it in. You guys can start. Yeah, so this is a big, thick, clumsy brush. So I'm not gonna go up to my edge with it because it won't come out nice. So I'm done with this brush. I'm gonna just get rid of my extra paint and I'll put it in the water. Now I'm going to use my thin brush to get up to the edges. This part might take me a little while to do. This is the part where you really want to slow down. There we go. Just take your time.
and just let this be a nice relaxing experience for you. Some of you guys are doing this as parent and me. This could be a really nice time to collaborate and paint together. Now, when you're painting, if you find any areas that came out a little bit thin, you can paint over those areas later, almost like a second coat, and that'll help fill it in. And this is an area where neatness counts. I hate saying that in art, but <laughs> there are times where it does. So neatness counts here. So that's why we take our time. We're not in a rush. And I hope you guys will keep sending me your pictures week to week. I got a couple last week and I posted you guys on Facebook last week. So I'd love if you guys continue doing that and I'll keep featuring you guys. I'm gonna paint really carefully around my flower. It's better to take your time than to rush. This is where my thin brush is really coming in handy. I'm just going over a couple areas, but I'm pretty much done. Show you what mine's coming out like. So far, so good. I'm looking around at you guys.
so here's a creative idea because your picture can come out different than mine. If you're doing this as a parent to me project, you might even want to give your cactuses a little bit of personality and you can really make them into your family members. Just a thought. Oh, Sophie is doing a canvas. Uh, yeah, I would paint the sides. I would paint them the nice blue that you're doing. I would paint the whole, all the sides with the same blue. That's my tip. That's nice that you're doing it as a canvas. When you guys finish up your blue, just write into me. So I know. Oh, nice. Amelia added a sunshine and some clouds done with the blue. Yeah, so that's a great idea. So you guys can make these your own. I love that. So in a minute, we're gonna mix the greens for a couple of the cactuses. If you look at the picture, they're actually all different greens. So we're gonna be mixing all these different types of greens. It'll be fun. And just uh, chime in if you're ready to move on, because I don't wanna move too fast. looking at all you guys. Dominic and Addie, you guys work so nicely together. It's cute to see a brother and sister who get along so nicely. <laughs> and Addie, I think you have pigtail, uh, you have braids, don't you? I think we have the same dude today. <laughs> so funny, hi Kristen. Michelle? Yes. Um, is it okay if I start painting the cactuses right now? You just want to start painting them? Yeah. I would recommend waiting a minute because I'm going to show you the right colors to use. It's up to you. It is your art time. So I if you want to start. I, I just need this beautiful like olive green cactus color. Okay, so what if what if you paint one of your cactuses that color, and then we'll do the other ones different greens. An important part of this project is that we're going to be making our cactuses different types of greens, so we can look at the differences. So I am going to go ahead and start showing you guys how to mix some of the colors for our cactuses. So move that out of the way. Got my paint palette here. Okay, I'm going to dry off my brush. First color I'm gonna make is gonna be a dark green. So I'm gonna do, take a scoop of my green here and a little bit of black. For black, I actually use burnt sienna. So it's not a true black actually. So this is a nice dark green. I'm gonna just choose one of my cactuses to make this color. You guys can pick and choose which cactus is which green, but I'm gonna show you guys four different greens. Okay, so we'll start with this one. And I'm gonna to choose to make my little guy in the front this color. Sorry, I'm trying to position this right. Whoop, I just painted my phone. <laughs> How did I do that? 
So I am painting right over my lines. If you squint, you'll still be able to see them. There was a reason that we painted those lines, I promise. But yeah, we are painting right over them. There's my first one. We're going to be going with a detail brush later and we're going to go over our lines again in black. So there's that. The little head at the top is a flower. So we're not going to paint it green. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I've got my green that I just mixed. That's this one. I think the cactus right behind this one, I want to use the same color. What I'm going to do is make it a little darker. I added a little bit more of my black to it so that they look slightly different. Here we go. So you see when they're next to each other, they look a little bit different. You see the difference there? So yeah, we are just gonna start painting our, our cactuses. I keep wanting to say canvas. You might be using a canvas. But well, we're painting cactuses. So remember, if your color is getting dry, just put a little bit of water on your paintbrush and mix it into your color. You want it to be nice and opaque. Opaque, opaque means that you can't see through it. All right, so that was my second green. Now, the cactus in the back, to me, I mean, this is just how I'm gonna make mine. And you guys can make your own color for it, as long as it's some kind of green. But the back cactus, to me, is a little bit more of a blue-green. So to create that color, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wash my brush again. It's okay if you're behind me, by the way. I'm just showing you where we're going. You have some freedom in this step. So for this back cactus, take a scoop of blue, and I'm gonna take a scoop of my, if you have teal, that's fine, otherwise, you could just use regular green. Mixy mix. It's like kind of a brighter green. Sorry, I know you can't see it in there. Sometimes it's hard to fit everything in the camera screen. Um, I'm gonna add a touch of black, just a touch. A little bit goes a long way. Okay. I'm gonna do switchy switch. making sure I'm in the screen here. I am. Take your time. No rushing. So I am going to use my thin brush to get up to my edges in this cactus. When in doubt, use your thin brush. If you're not sure which brush to use, use the thin guy. It's gonna help you get the most detail.
So I'm just going over some areas. So I didn't paint the top part. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I know you can't see it. This over here, we're going to be making that a pink in a little bit because that's also a flower. I'm going to mix one more green for our cactus over here. Even though it looks like two separate cactuses, it's actually one cactus. So I'm going to look back at my picture for guidance here. Okay, this one is the most like a regular green. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Big scoop of my regular green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, just a little bit. Here we go. I think that's perfect. Looks the most like a natural green. But whatever green you make is fine. Have fun. I hope you guys enjoy mixing your colors. As an artist, that's one of my favorite things to do. So let your color be, if it's not quote unquote perfect or the same as mine, that's all right. It's yours. So just let this be an expression of your creativity. And again, I'm gonna use my thin brush as I get close to this flower. So I'm going to go over some of my areas again, do a second coat. It's really a beautiful day out today and it's not too hot, at least as of <laughs> nine this morning when I was outside. Might be a good day to take a walk. This time of year, even though I love summer, it's a little hard for me, just a little too hot for me. And it's really hot for the people that live in places like Arizona, New Mexico, where our cactus friends live. This is the toughest time of year for them. <laughs> All right, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on in any way. Otherwise, we'll hang for a minute or you can write in to me. Take your time. We still have plenty of time. Michelle? Yes. Well, the only thing I did is like I did the small flower, flower, but I did do the little, the little uh, circles. Like oh, that's then, okay. So you know what? You could pretend that you drew them, and you could just paint right on top of all that stuff. You can paint your flower, but let your picture dry a little bit. Something you could do to make your picture dry quicker is grab a hair dryer, and you can actually just dry off those areas, maybe have a parent help you. And then you can actually just paint right on top of what you painted before, believe it or not. Yeah, but um, I, 
the one thing I can't do is that my dad saw me in the beginning. I can't interrupt my mom and my and my grandparents. No, you can do. The, you can you can blow on it. I know. Or you can use a book and fan it with a book. This type of paint dries really fast. Yeah, because mine is already dry. Oh, okay. You want to make sure it's completely dry. If it's not, the color underneath will mix with the color on top that you're painting. But you can give it a try and see what happens, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start showing you guys how to paint our flowers. So the one that looks like a daisy is going to be completely yellow, but the middle of it is red. I'm going to show you the middle first, though. I'm just going by our picture. Mine's going to look the most like our picture because that's what I'm guiding you through, but you're welcome to make changes. In the picture, though, the red for the flower looks like this. There's like a white dot in the middle. I don't, I don't need to do exactly the same. Exactly. And you don't have to make it just no, like the picture. You said I no, no, you are. Yeah, that's your choice. Yeah, you have artistic license here, so you can make changes as you would like, anywhere you like. That's the beauty of this. And you're not getting graded. <laughs> okay, so for the flower, I'm actually going to mix a little bit of white with my yellow. I just tried using straight yellow. I think a little bit of white will make it brighter, but you can use straight yellow if you like. You can still see my line underneath. So I'll probably do a second coat once this dries. I spent this morning planning what we're going to have as far as our classes for fall. And I'm still going to have a couple of um, virtual options for you guys too. And we're also going to have a lot in the studio and lots of homeschool times like during the day. Putting that out there. I'm actually going to fix up this little area here. There we go. Okay. Now these other two flowers are pinks. Wait, can you see that? Here we go. So the one that's down here is a darker pink. So to make the darker pink, I'm going to use my red. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of yellow, uh, I'm sorry, a tiny bit of white in it. I think I might actually put a little bit of yellow in there too, just a tiny bit, see what happens. So this pink was mostly red, a little bit of white and a touch of yellow. Makes it slightly on the peachier side, just a nice variation. All right, so for the top, this one's fun. You can use a little bit of red, a lot of white. It's a much, much lighter, brighter pink. I'm gonna paint the whole thing in this color, but I'll show you something fun that I'm gonna do up here. And I am following along the picture. Not that you have to. I say that a lot because I need you guys to know your options. All right, so the top flower is outlined in a darker pink. I'm gonna use that pink that I just mixed for my lower flower and I'm gonna outline with that same color. Okay. So I just went and I outlined it. And again, Michelle? I'm going, yes. 
It's almost my lunch time. Is I usually eat lunch at twelve oh twelve oh five. So, um, so it's up to you. So our class is an hour and a half. Um, you're welcome to turn off your video if you like, and then join when you're done. Uh, you can ask your parent. Because there's still yeah, a bit of work fine. to do. It's fine. Okay. I hear you, though. I like to eat my lunch at the same time every day, too. <laughs> I'm the same way. Okay. So, in our bottom flower, there's a little bit of white swirl that happens. It's like a rose. So that's what I'm up to so far. I want to show you guys the lines for our cactuses because they're all a little different from each other. But I want to wait until everyone's really ready. So I don't want to rush that part. Okay. Do you guys want to just write in to me? when you're ready to start making the lines. I don't know where everyone's at. All right, I think I might go ahead and start showing you guys how to do our lines. Okay. So I think we're gonna start with the big cactus in the back, okay? I wanna show you guys how to make your brush very thin. Um, hang on a second, I'm looking for my thinnest brush. I just took it out of the water. I'm on the face screen, the one with my face. If you want to look really quick. So I just took my brush out of the water. What I'm going to do is I make it sharper by pulling it. I think I might have shown you this last week too. This is just a technique that I like to do. And what it's going to do is make your tip very, very sharp. Because after a while, the tip on your brush could get frayed. So this makes it like new again, just by pulling it. Okay. And I'm gonna dip in my white. Now all those lines that we drew in black before, I'm going to paint them white. Just on our big, the big cactus. If you can't see your lines, you can kind of imagine where they are. This brush is very frayed and I'm having issues with it. I'm gonna change my brush. There we go. Now, since I'm looking at the picture for inspiration, I'm going to do mine the most like the picture. And again, you don't have to. But the cactus is actually outlined. The outside of it is outlined with black. So I am going to do the same in mine. But you don't have to.
my paint is a little dry, so I'm just adding some water to it. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna come back to that white that I was using. Just gonna fix up this little area in this neighborhood over here. Okay, there's another fun thing that happens with our big cactus that I'd like to show you next. Just fixing up a couple of my lines. There we go. Okay, so here's the fun thing that happens next. There are yellow dots inside the lines. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip every other line. I'm going to do the next one over here. And this cactus is going to be finished in like a second. And we'll move on to the next one. Just fixing up some of my little dots. Some of them didn't come out dark. So I'm just putting another little bit of paint in them. Okay, so that's my first cactus. It's all done. All right, so my next one, I'm just gonna check in actually before I move on. How's everyone doing? And just remember, I'm going to be sending you guys the video. You're always going to get the video a few hours after class. So if you miss something, you can always come back to it. And the nice thing about the video is that you can rewind. So all right, I'm going to show you guys our next one. I'm holding my tripod. That's why it's all over the place. Hang on. Okay, so I'm going to use my dark color again. We made those fancy lines inside the smaller um, cactuses. They're going to be a little hard to see because this is a darker uh, cactus. Just do your best. So I'm using the black, in my case, burnt umber. I would have used black, but I didn't seem to have any anywhere. There we go. Now these two are similar to each other. So I'm going to also use the black for my lines in the other one. It's going to be very subtle. And it might be a little hard to see, but that's okay. Okay, so I'll show you that. Remember the lines, we did them in different directions. So you can still see my line, it's just a little hard to see. That's fine. But 
Jackie just got home. She's been with my mom. Oh, Stelios is here. Are you doing virtual right now? I am live right now. Okay. Hi, Stelios. There's a lot of fun stuff in this cactus too. So I'm also going to outline, while I'm at it, I'm going to outline my other cactus as well. It's going to come out slightly different than the picture that we're working off of. I did put my own little spin on it as well. really comes to life when you start adding the lines. See mine starting to come to life. There's still a little bit more to do after this. And I think we'll end right on time today. I'm like the queen of going over time. So I will get you guys out on time. I'm gonna trace my flower. I just feel like it. You don't have to. I'm just going to. Yeah, I think that definitely helped my picture. And I'm gonna show you some more fun things in a second. We're gonna be using our thin brush again. And I think at the end, if we are able to, we'll do a group shot just like last time, because that was fun. All right. So I'm gonna come back to my white. I'm gonna to come to this um, cactus right here. So this cactus has like white V's all over it. You can just place them around. They can come out of the cactus too. So you can just put them around. And there's also like little yellow dots in this one too. So I'm gonna add them as well. Looks like there's yellow and black dots. It's gonna put a couple around. I don't wanna overload the picture.
So I just put some little yellow dots in there. And I'm gonna put some black dots as well. Just a few. All over, wherever. Okay. There's a little tiny bit more work to do on the two cactuses in the front. So these ones have white dots and also yellow dots. So I'll show you what to do with the white dots first. So we're gonna pick one or two places and have the white dots kind of follow the lines. There's that. And I know I'm working fast now. Guys can take your time. These two cactuses do similar things. So I'm going to do a real similar thing. They're like brother and sister cactuses. Or in our family's case, sisters. Okay. And there's just some yellow dots. The yellow dots don't have as much of a rule. They're kind of just all over. I'll show you how I do them. Just kind of place them around. Just a few. A little bit goes a long way. All right, there's 10 minutes left. I'm gonna stick with you guys. And we'll do our little group shot at the end. And what I'll do in a second, since my video portion is just about over, I'll go into our gallery view and see if anyone needs a hand in any area. And I'd love to see how your projects are coming out. I'm just painting over a couple little parts. Right. So I'm all done with mine. And I'm going to go into our gallery view. See how everyone's doing. Does anyone want to show me their picture? Looking good, Sarah. Oh, I love your, um, you have little clouds in the background. That came out awesome. Anyone else want to show me? Oh, very nice. Is that Addie's? Whose picture is that? Oh, nice. Okay, Isabella, you want to show me yours? Isabella. Oh, beautiful. How about Lucia? Lucia, can I see what you're up to? Amelia, I know that your camera is not working out. No big deal. Right. Just want to see where you're at. Oh, cute. Look, she put a little giraffe in there. See, she made it her own. That's awesome. Very good. I am going to say that everyone here really made their picture their own. So they are definitely expressions of your creativity. And I love that. And I do hope that you guys will send me pictures of your
finished projects later on when you guys are done. It, give me a wave if you're ready to do our group shot right now. Okay. So you know what? We'll just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to set up. Hang on, I'm not quite ready yet. I just set up. Display my paint in this picture so it's not blank. Okay. So on the count of three, so Lucia. Who's everybody. chatting with me? Izzy. Hi. Okay, you guys ready? One. Uh, Sarah, can you just hold yours up higher? There you go. Perfect. Good. One, two, three. Geez. Very good, guys. All right. So, oh, Summer's trying to get in. I hope she wasn't waiting long. Okay. Um, oh, Summer, do you want to show me how yours came out? You know what? Maybe we'll just do one more screenshot. Yeah, let's do one more. Okay. Ready guys, we're just gonna do it again. Hang on a second, I'm setting up. Okay, so can everyone grab their picture? Hold it up. What about, um, okay, you ready? One, two, three, cheese. Good job guys, beautiful work. So don't forget to email me those pictures. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end our video and when you're done, you can actually just leave the meeting. I'm going to stay on for another minute or two if anyone needs me. But if you're all done, you can just go ahead and, um, and just leave the meeting, okay?